Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm really excited for today's video. I'm excited for every video. You guys know this by now. This chair is super squeaky, so let me just pre-apologize for all the little squeaks that may be in here. I'm gonna try my best not to move, but it's kind of hard for me. So today's video is all about Game of Thrones. I'm so excited. Game of Thrones comes out this week. We are down to the countdown. You guys have no idea how much I love Game of Thrones. I really, really love it so much. And this channel is mostly about makeup, but it's an extension of me. And I want to share with you guys the things that I love. So we're going to do makeup and we're going to be talking about my favorite Game of Thrones theories. There is literally so much out here on YouTube that you can find on theories and it really sucks you in. Once you start watching them, you can't stop. It's so amazing how much of a complex world Game of Thrones is and how George R. R. Martin wrote this. It's just so crazy how many different things could actually end up happening. I guarantee that the way that he writes the books is not going to be the same way that the TV show is ending since we've surpassed the books now. Regardless, we're going to be talking about season eight and uh, the different things that could possibly happen and what, you know, what theory, what are my favorite theories? What are some that I think might happen? What are some things that I want happening? Just, you know, all around different things Game of Thrones related. I'm also going to be doing a makeup look that is going to be a fire and ice makeup look. So it's gonna be fiery on one side and kind of icy on the other. I did my hair kind of Game of Thronesy. I mean, kind of, I mean, it's not like the best thing in the world, but it's it's a little bit Game of Thronesy, right? I did my best. So I wanted to mention really quick, I'm gonna link a bunch of stuff in the description box below, which includes a bunch of videos that I kind of used as reference to come up with my own theories and or like theories that I kind of agree with. So if you want to check out those, those will all be in the description box below. Like I said, they will suck you in. So just make sure you have a lot of free time. It is really insane just what people come up with. So the way that I'm going to be talking about these theories is I'm actually going to be going through each character and kind of relating back to some of the questions that I have that I think season eight needs to address. So I'll kind of hit on the majority of the main characters and you know, some of them that I just really want to see their storyline a little bit more of and how I think that their storyline is going to affect the overall ending to season eight. There are obviously gonna be spoilers for season one through seven in here. So if you've not seen them, first of all, why, what are you doing? Have you been living under a rock? Because it's the best show ever. And books, I, I mean, I haven't gotten through all the books, but I've only made it through book one and a little bit into book two. They're extremely long. Let me show you how long they are. So if you've never seen the Game of Thrones books, this, these are the books. These are all of the books. This used to fit in here, but I think because it's gotten read a couple of times, it doesn't really fit in there anymore. But these books are enormous. They are so long. It will literally take so long to get through them all. One day I will, one day. It's really insane all the history and storyline plots that George R. R. Martin came up with. It's just, it's just insane. I think that's what intrigues me most about Game of Thrones is the fact that it's just such a huge complex world that one single person came up with. Of course, the TV series has writers and stuff now for the show, but everything stemmed from his books. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into some of my favorite theories. <laughs> don't mind being this close to my face most of the time. This is gonna be about theory. So I'm not gonna be talking about makeup as much. I'm just gonna be kind of doing it while I talk about the theories. The first thing I'm doing as far as like makeup, I'm gonna be sketching out kind of what I wanna do. So before I get into the actual theories, I just, there's some things that we kind of need to address in season eight. So obviously the biggest question that we all have is who the heck is the Night King? What does he want? What is he doing? Like, what's going on with him? We need to know. Who is this guy? That is the biggest question right now is who is the Night King? Another big thing is babies. Is Daenerys gonna have a baby? Is Cersei actually pregnant? 
I don't know, I'm skeptical. <laughs> we also need to discuss John and Daenerys's relationship. Where's that gonna lead? What's going on with them? And another person I'm going to focus on is Bran. Bran, I feel like he's gonna be a huge important role in season eight there are tons of questions i have revolving around bran so we will get into that and then ultimately who's going to end up on the throne or is there even going to be a throne so those are just a few things that i want to talk about and those things are kind of what my theories revolve around so the first person i actually want to talk about is bran brandon stock as we all know is he's a green seer which means that he has prophetic dreams he can kind of see into the future and he can also warg into other people and it's also called like skin changing he has very very rare abilities and we know that his abilities are really rare because the original three-eyed raven mentioned that only one in a thousand men are green seers and only one in a thousand green seers can also skin change there's definitely things that we haven't even uncovered about him yet and he hasn't uncovered about himself and in season eight we are definitely sure to see some of those things come out i really think there's so much more to him than we know right now so basically what i'm saying is that bran is really strong there's going to be some things that he can really do and one theory that's out there is that bran is going to skin change into the ice dragon which is totally a theory that i can stand by and i really think that that would be an awesome thing to happen some of this may be kind of all over the place but a lot of the backstory has to do with these theories so some of it i will build and you know everything will relate to each other but another thing that the original three-eyed raven said was that the past is already written the ink is dry and that is super important to note because all of the history that we've learned throughout this series is really going to be important for the final season. I think that the history of everything is really going to show how everything comes together. Bran has these abilities to go back in time. Maybe there are things that have already happened in this series that didn't make sense or were just like folk tale stories that end up adding up and like seeing how everything ties together. I don't know if I'm explaining this very good, but basically all of these abilities that Bran has is really relating to this huge theory that I think is really interesting of Bran could possibly be the Night King. At first when you hear that it's like absolutely no. How could that possibly be a thing? So let's talk about the Night King just a little bit before I talk about the specifics of that theory. I personally think that in this series we're gonna find out that the Night King is not as bad of a guy as we see him to be. I really think something's gonna happen and we're gonna understand his situation a lot more because George R.R. Martin, when he was writing Game of Thrones, he really wrote these characters for us to connect to really hardcore and all the bad characters sometimes have parts where we actually understand them and we see them as, you know, not so bad. So I think that the Night King is one of those characters. This is really evident in characters like the Hound. I mean, I don't know about you, but at the beginning of Game of Thrones, I did not like the Hound at all, but now I really feel for him and I understand him a lot more. Now that we've seen how he acts and, you know, he actually deep down kind of has like a good heart, but he just really appears rough on the outside. Another character that this is evident with is Jamie Lannister. He's the one who pushed Bran out the window. We all hated him so much, but now I find myself rooting for him and wanting him to do good. There's a lot of evidence throughout history and little like folk tales and stuff that we've heard that the Night King actually may be a Stark. He probably has some kind of Stark blood in him and vice versa with the Starks that the Starks may have some kind of White Walker qualities to them. I mean, they are made for the cold after all, as Catelyn Stark said. <laughs> Bran and the Night King, they have a lot of similar qualities. They have the same kind of abilities. That scene where the Night King sees him and touches his arm that shows right there that they can do some of the same things so now that we kind of have a little bit of a grasp on Bran and the Night King let's talk about how there is a the theory that the Night King is Bran Stark or Bran Stark is the Night King 
basically they're the same person. So here's how the theory goes. So it's present day and Bran is obviously a cripple and he really wants to help fix this whole war and fix the situation. So the theory is that Bran goes back in time to the time of the Mad King. And the Mad King, you know, we all know he was crazy. He was spouting off words. He had all this wildfire and just like, he was doing some really crazy things and he was just insane basically. It's possible that the reason that the Mad King went insane was because Bran went back in time and started whispering to the Mad King, trying to get him to do things to prevent all of these wars from happening in the first place. But clearly it ends up not working out because everybody thinks the king is crazy because he's hearing this person talking to him. But it makes sense that Bran could have been talking to him and that's why he was getting all this wildfire saying, burn them all, burn them all. But ultimately, you know, everything still happened. So that didn't work. So Bran comes back to the current, but he hasn't given up yet. So he tries again and he goes back even further in time to the time when the wall was built. So the wall was built really long time ago by a man named Brandon the Builder. His name was also Brandon Stark, just like Bran. We hear them talk about Bran the Builder quite often in this series. It's possible that during this second attempt to fix things, Bran was you know, making, he was talking to people, he was making a reputation for himself. He ends up becoming Brandon the Builder to build this wall, again, to try and prevent all the events that are going to happen. Here on YouTube, you can watch some videos that are official Game of Thrones videos that talk about the history of Game of Thrones, specifically one of these times being around Bran the Builder. They show visualization of Bran the Builder. It kind of looks like Bran the Builder is crippled. You can tell in some of these pictures that he's sitting and that he kind of needs help around. So that is a key point that Bran the Builder could also be Bran. But ultimately, as we know, the wall does not stop everything that's happening in the current time of Game of Thrones. I'm going to be using this Krylon Aqua Color. These are water activated paints for the face. So we're back in the current time and Bran is really determined he's gonna try one more time. So this time he goes back even further. So far that he gets back to the time of the first men and during this time the first men are in a war against the children of the forest. The children of the forest are very upset because the first men are you know they're tearing down the forest, they're losing their homes, they're really going at each other at this time. So Brand thinks that if he goes back to this time, maybe he can talk to the children of the forest and talk them out of making the Night King in the first place. So he goes back in time and there's two different ways that this theory has kind of been presented. One of them is presented as Bran goes back in time, he's himself, he's talking to the children of the forest, they think he's crazy, they don't want to hear it, they don't care, you know, they gag him, they put a rope around his mouth and they tie him to a tree and they make him the Night King. The other way that this could have happened is that Bran could have went back in time and warged into this man that we see getting the dragon stones pushed into his chest but before that happens he's trying to again convince the children of the forest to stop what they're doing that it's dangerous it's wrong you know like all this stuff is gonna happen and they turn this man into the night king bran is trying to get back to the future but he can't because he's gone back in time way too far He's in this person's body. He's drowning in the past. He can't get out. And this is super possible because the original Three Eyed Raven warned him of this. If you get in, you're gonna drown, he said. So it's possible that Bran got stuck as the Night King and he couldn't get out. And basically, he from then on out was the Night King. I think that this theory is super interesting and I think definitely it could be a possibility. I think there's ways that the writers could have for sure made this go this way, but at this point anything could happen so 
we'll see if this is actually something that comes true or not but a couple other things i want to mention about the night king that i think is interesting if you guys watch game of thrones you would have remembered when the crafters got killed the crafters are gilly's family so gilly's father had all of these babies and he was sacrificing all of the boy babies to the white walkers and we never really found out why he did that but it's possible maybe the night king had some kind of arrangement with the crafters maybe the crafters has stark blood and these babies had all the stark blood and for some reason the night king needed specific blooded babies to be sacrificed to him to keep things going or maybe he was trying to find an heir and it's possible maybe only heirs can be stark blooded but one thing interesting to note is that things really didn't start kicking off in the game of thrones war until that was really intense <laughs> until those babies stopped getting sacrificed. So the Night King doesn't have these babies coming in anymore and maybe this is why he's angry. Maybe he, maybe this deal that he had with the crafters was an old treaty in a sense that has now been broken so this is why he's coming and this whole war has started it is possible that that's something that could be happening and this little theory actually plays a little bit of a part into uh the relationship of john and daenerys which we will go ahead and talk about them next okay guys now we have some fire and ice going on here looking good so let's start talking about some theories surrounding john and daenerys stereotypical tv show we're all wanting them to be in love we want them to have babies we want them to be a happy family take the throne and you know have a beautiful little ending no that's not gonna happen i'm telling you right now there's no way absolutely no way that's gonna happen no, they're not gonna do that because this is Game of Thrones. People are going to die, people we love, people we hate, hopefully. <laughs> One quick little thing to relate back to the Night King with Jon and Daenerys is if they would end up having a baby, it's possible that maybe this baby could be like the ultimate sacrifice to the Night King. I can't remember if I actually saw that in a theory or if I actually thought of that myself, but I think that would be an interesting twist to things. Kind of like the ultimate baby. <laughs> this could be possibly the heir that the Night King has been searching for, maybe? I don't think that's gonna happen, but it's just something that kind of popped into my head when I was thinking about them having a baby and how, you know, the Night King needs these babies for some reason and, you know, all these, just, just all this baby talk and ugh, got me thinking, you never know. But the main theory that I want to focus on with Daenerys and Jon revolves around what we have heard on the show thrown around many times Azor Ahai and Nisa Nisa. If you guys remember, Melisandre claims that she thinks that Jon Snow is the Azor Ahai and we've also heard other people call Daenerys Nisa Nisa. Now Game of Thrones is super complicated. It has a big history. There's prophecies, there's myths, there's folk tales, there's songs, there's just so much to this story. So in order to understand this theory better, I kind of have to go through the legend and prophecy of Azor Ahai and Nisa Nisa. So here's how the legend goes. Darkness lit over the world and a hero, Azor Ahai, was chosen to fight against it. To fight against the darkness, Azor Ahai needed to forge a hero's sword. He labored for 30 days and 30 nights until it was done. However, when he went to temper it in water, the sword broke. He was not one to give up so easily, so he started over. The second time, he took 50 days and 50 nights to make the sword even better than the first. To temper it this time, he captured a lion and drove the sword into its heart. But once more, the steel shattered. The third time, with a heavy heart, for he knew beforehand what he must do to finish the blade, he worked for a hundred days and a hundred nights until it was finished. This time, he called for his wife, Nisa Nisa, and asked her to bear her breast. He drove his sword into her living heart, her soul combining with the steel of the sword, creating Lightbringer, the red sword of heroes. So we have Azor High and we have Nisa Nisa. Azor High is often referred to Lightbringer because of the sword's name. Now, given this legend in mind, there's a prophecy that coincides with this legend. And this prophecy is the prince that was promised. And we've heard this so many times on Game of Thrones, but the prince that was promised, it comes from this legend. So this prophecy states, there will come a day after a long summer when the stars bleed and the cold breath of darkness falls heavy on the world. 
In this dread hour, a warrior shall draw from the fire a burning sword, and that sword shall be Lightbringer, the red sword of heroes. And he who clasps it shall be Azor Ahai, come again, and darkness shall flee before him. So right now, currently in Game of Thrones, Melisandre is continuously saying that Jon Snow is the prince that has promised Azor Ahai to come again. But as we've seen in the past before, Melisandre was extremely wrong the first time. So who's to say that maybe she's wrong this time too? But in this theory that I'm about to talk about, I think that Daenerys is Azor Ahai and Jon Snow is actually Misa Nisa. So I think that the roles are actually switched here. I know it sounds a little crazy, but let me explain this theory. First of all, who's to say that the prince that is promised is not the princess that is promised? Maester Aemon mentions that the Bleeding Star, along with Smoke and Salt, aka when Daenerys made the dragons born from the fire, was also a part of the prince that was promised. So it's very well possible that Daenerys is this prince that was promised. I mean, there are tons of clues that show that Daenerys could be this hero that's to come. I mean, think about all the accomplishments she's done and gathered all these people. That's pretty incredible, all the things that she was able to do. Now let's talk about Jon Snow a little bit and why I think his part is more evident of why he could be Nisa Nisa and she could be Azor High. Jon Snow has so many similar qualities to the story of Jesus. I know that's kind of came out of left field, but bear with me. So George R.R. R. Martin takes tons of inspiration from real life events, wars, religions, all kinds of things he has used. He's a history guy, so he used a lot of inspiration from real world events to write his own story. And I think that Jon Snow has a lot of similar qualities to Jesus. So a couple of examples of this is Jon Snow, he died and then he was risen again a few days later by Melisandre. It's possible that Jon Snow could represent a sacrifice to this world. You know, I think that he represents the ultimate sacrifice in this show. Just like how Jesus was a sacrifice for our world to forgive us of our sins, I kind of feel like Jon Snow is going to have that same representation in the final season. So in this theory, those are kind of the reasons why Jon Snow would be Anissa Nisa and Daenerys would be considered Azor Ahai. So what exactly does that mean? I mean, the legend does say Azor Ahai forged this sword and it only worked when he plunged it into his wife's heart. Maybe Daenerys and Jon Snow end up getting married and the same situation has to happen in order for Daenerys to become the red sword of heroes. Maybe she has to do this in order to become the true Azor Ahai and basically save everybody. <laughs> That's basically how that theory goes. As I'm recording this, I'm figuring out I'm not very good at explaining this stuff. So like I said, please check out the videos down below that I'm going to link of the videos that I watched to kind of come up with some of these theories and I use some of their ideas and all of that because I'm clearly not very good at explaining this stuff. I definitely don't claim to be an expert of ga on Game of Thrones. I just really love it a lot. <laughs> Another thought about Daenerys is that I think that she for sure will end up pregnant by Jon Snow. Whether or not we're actually going to see the baby in this series, uh, my guess is probably no, but I do think that we will probably end up finding out that she is pregnant at some point. I mean, it just makes sense. Maybe if she has to kill Jon Snow afterwards, she finds out she's pregnant or something and you know, it'd be like super emotional. Not only that, without either Jon Snow getting some other girl pregnant or her having a baby, the Targaryens are done for. So I really feel like there has to be a baby involved somehow to continue the Targaryen line. So we're pretty much done with the eye look. The rest of my makeup is gonna be pretty basic, you know, foundation, concealer, eyebrows. So let's continue on with some more characters. Cersei and Jamie Lannister. So, Cersei. First of all, I really don't think she's pregnant. I really don't. I just, I don't know. It could be in me just not wanting to believe it. <laughs> 
but I really don't think she's pregnant. I really feel like she was just pulling Jamie's leg, or Tyrion. I really feel like she was just pulling Tyrion's leg and is trying to get leverage over Jamie and just make people feel a certain type of way. I really just don't think she's pregnant, but at the same time, it does make things more complicated. So it wouldn't surprise me if she actually is, but at the same time, I just really don't want her to be. I just want her to die. I just want her to die. I'm not gonna lie. So the next theory I have to talk about is Jamie ends up killing Cersei. So this is a theory that's been floating around and I wholeheartedly think that it's definitely something that could come true. You know, it's super poetic. It's super emotional, but it's, I mean, it's also kind of obvious. So maybe they won't go that route just because it is so obvious. But I feel like if anyone is going to kill Jamie or kill Jamie. If anyone's going to kill Cersei, I feel like it has to be Jamie. Like, I feel like it has to be. Who else is better for the job than Jamie? I don't know. So I don't have a whole lot of evidence behind that one. It's just something that I feel like is kind of obvious and, you know, I feel like they they might take it that way. Also, if he does end up killing her, you know, a lot of people are going to be pretty happy about that. So it's even possible maybe people will be so happy they might rejoice and they may end up even putting Jamie on the throne because they're so happy that he killed her. But I highly doubt that's going to happen, honestly. I highly doubt he's going to end up on the throne if anyone ends up on the throne. I hope so bad that Jamie and Brianna Tarth end up together somehow, some way, whether or not one of them dies or what. But I hope that before anything happens, they end up ending up together because they just fit so well and they have their journey together and they just really vibe so well together so i really think it'd be awesome if they ended up together now Tyrion. so Tyrion lannister so i've been watching some videos on him lately and and there's one that's really interesting that i'm definitely gonna link below about his story in the book versus the tv show and honestly after seeing it i was kind of upset because i really love Tyrion so much and it kind of made me feel like the tv show has not done his storyline very well at all i feel like he's kind of been in the back the last season i mean he's definitely involved in all that but i feel like i don't know nothing crazy really happened with him or anything his storyline is pretty like vague there are theories that he may end up betraying daenerys because you know she, daenerys is due for her last betrayal from her vision that she saw in like season three or something. There's different ones that are thrown out there, but she's definitely already had at least two, so she's due for one more. She's gotta do for one more, so it's possible Tyrion might be that final betrayal on her. He did act a little suspicious in season seven, where, you know, he went in to talk to Cersei when she told him that she was pregnant and, you know, it kind of ended really abruptly. Like, we don't really know how the conversation between them ended. So is it possible she made a deal with him that he didn't tell anybody about? Maybe he promised her unborn child that they would be on the throne or something like that, you know? And then at the end of the season, when Daenerys and Jon are, you know, going to do the deed, Tyrion kind of, you know, is in the hallway and sees Jon go in there and he has this really weird look on his face and it, it's almost as if he is, some people thought it was like jealousy, but I don't think it was jealousy. I don't think that Tyrion showed any signs of like attraction to Daenerys. I think it was more of like, oh no, this can't happen. This is bad. This is bad. Like, I think that it was more of concern than anything. That will complicate the situation. There'll be another baby who will basically be in line as an heir to Daenerys, and maybe he's concerned because he made this deal with Cersei, and now there's two gonna be two babies, you know, that whole thing. Maybe that's why he was concerned. I think that there are gonna be some big things with Tyrion happening in season eight because he's just gonna do for something big, you know, because he was kind of in the back for a while there. So something with him is gonna happen too. At least I hope so. I really want more from Tyrion's storyline. I really, really, really do. Definitely check out that video that I'm gonna link about Tyrion below because it's really interesting to hear how his character is in the books versus the TV show. It's, you know, it's similar but his personality comes out a lot more in the books and he's like has a lot more it's really cool go check it out <laughs> alrighty guys so this is the finished look fire and 
us. That is the end of this video. Those are some of my favorite theories for Game of Thrones Season 8. I'm super excited for this season. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have another video coming out on Friday that is Game of Thrones related as well. That one is going to be a lot more makeup-y, but we are still talking about Game of Thrones. I hope you enjoyed these theories. I hope that I was able to get my point across. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous about this video just because I'm not an expert on Game of Thrones. I just love it so much and I just want everybody to be able to enjoy it too. Let me know what you think of these theories down in the comments below. Do you agree with them? Do you have different thoughts? What do you think? Is it stuff that you've never thought of before? Also, like I said before, make sure to check out those other videos down that I have in the description box if you're interested in these theories. They do way better than I do. That's all I got today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!